you and I have not spoken since this, but please tell me, what was it like to be there at St. Andrews and watch Cameron Smith do what he did with pretty much most every human there wanting to see it for Rory? What in the world was that like for you to witness, Mike Tirico? Yeah. Rich, it was. I was talking to a few tour players uh, at an event yesterday about this. Also, mm-hmm. it's one of the best back nines in a major championship <sighs> that you'll ever see, mm-hmm. and it's given all of that. It was Rory's got to win this for all the reasons that people have talked about. Uh, the holes were really put in very tricky spots because there wasn't wind. If you don't have wind in St Andrews it loses one of its two defenses. The other one are hole locations. So it wasn't like guys were making a ton of birdies later on in the round. For him to shoot 30 on the back nine of a major (laughs) championship with Rory on top of the board at the home of golf without the holes being in easy spots, he played Rich holes 10 through 14 in 15 strokes. Now, I don't know how good your game has gotten in the last few years, but I've played... Two holes in 15 strokes. You've played two holes in 15 <laughs> strokes. For him to do that in that situation, that's one of the best back nines ever at a major on Sunday. And I don't think we really were ready for it because it just snuck up on everybody because of all the tension being on Rory. So good for him. Great for him. Yeah, I mean, the, that back nine, we were talking about it here, Mike. It's the only back nine for a major championship that could even be in the same area code or zip code or or universe is is Augusta National where you have holes that you can make eagle on you have holes where you can completely blow up on um, and then there's an iconic hole that you know is a bucket list hole for everybody wanting to play Um, and then the finish as well there's nothing that that was unbelievable to watch and I just couldn't believe what I was watching yeah Um, I, I agree with you it, it kind of snuck up on us too. I, I really think because because you thought it was the two guys, Rory and Hovland, in the last group, and then he was in position. But just look, he did it the Players Championship. When he makes putts, he makes them in bunches, and he's as good a putter as maybe anybody on tour. And he proved that. Have you done the Scotland golf? Course? I have not. I have not. I I so I so I so want to. Let's, I mean, that's a... let's do it next year. All right, you and I'm serious. Let's, Let's, uh, let's get like a group of fun guys. Okay. Let's let's go do that. That that would be a blast. How about how about uh, I know Brock when you're pointing at you, but uh, how about like a sports center reunion? How about that? Let's oh get DP. Gosh. Let's get DP. That would be really funny. Um, you know, help would do it. I, I'm serious. Like let's let's that, let's do that sort of thing. That is exactly that what blast. I would do. I would love that. That, that. that that would be a lot of fun. But they are they're great trips. They're great towns, and uh, I, I will tell everybody who's listening. If you ever do get the chance to go to the Open, uh, it's always good when it's in the U.K. Any time it's played, it's really good when it's in Scotland. And when it is at St. Andrews, when it's in Scotland, when it's at St. Andrews, it's the absolute best. This was the fifth one I've been lucky enough to cover, and everyone just delivers. And There's no place uh, that, if you love golf, that compares to the town of St. Andrews. So uh, if you can do it, go do it. And Cam Smith's going to have something to uh, – be remembered for forever no matter what tour he ends up on in the next few months or years no i know good one uh, but i'm serious so we like yeah. we could we could get all of us we could facetime killer from there Kilborn. you know we could just facetime him from a pub right see what he's up to no. he can lift his martini glass and his mahogany uh you know walled uh, uh living room from here in los angeles we'll raise a pint we could do that right um oh my god we could who was the first guy you did sports center with i don't think i've ever asked you that who was the first, uh, or, or 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 was it was it LC? Oh, but which oh, oh. who was the first anchor that no, you did it with? I'm going to give you one now. The first sports center I did was at 2:30 in the morning on July. I want to say 14th, uh-huh. a Friday night, 13th or 14th. It was with Jim Bergamo. Jim Bergamo. Man. Was Jimmy still there when you were there? No, he was gone. Okay. First, by yeah, the way, first day I walked into to work at Sports Center. Was when right. was when they uh, they shot the Don't Walk commercial. Oh no, is that right? Yes, like the the, the hands across America type commercial, <laughs> where where you everybody sang you know uh, like we are the world, don't walk. Like that was my first day. To stop, stop traveling, right? That's exactly right. Yeah, exactly. 
that, <laughs> that was my first one. Jim Bergamo, huh? Jim Bergamo and then Ann Montgomery were the first couple of people I did Sports Center with, and then uh, I would do a bunch of uh, a bunch of Friday Saturdays in the fall yeah. with Tom Mees, God rest his soul. That's right. And then uh, and then right after I started, a few months later. Carl Ravage and Linda Cohn, but I did the bulk of the sports centers I did. Probably 40% of the sports centers I did were with Chris Myers. And we did a lot of 2.30 a.m., half hour, 11 Pacific sports centers. And when they started airing sports center on a loop in the morning every half hour, yeah. uh, that, that helped both, both of our careers because management and other people would see it in, in the morning when they'd wake up. And Chris and I had a, a wonderful thing going and I, I love those times and I always laugh when, you know, Chris is doing NFL games and NASCAR and all great stuff for Fox. And uh, when our paths cross every once in a while, it's just neat to reflect on uh, doing basketball highlights and hockey. I, Chris loved the NBA. He wasn't as big a hockey fan. Right. So he would, he would trade he would trade an NBA highlight block with me for an NHL highlight block. Like, hey, I'll, I'll give you a, I'll give you a couple of NHL highlights in the in the C section. <laughs> if you give me a couple NBA games, <laughs> we would trade highlights. It was a fun time. Oh my time. gosh! Like one, he, Chris Chris Myers was one of the first Sports Center anchors I ever crossed paths with after leaving ESPN. Although it wasn't him, we used the old Hollywood Hotel booth. Oh my gosh! For our oh. for our Hall of Fame coverage at NFL Network, we would put it right next to the interstate, and it's. We needed to have sort of an enclosed booth where you could see the hall behind us, but not hear the trucks zipping by I-77. So we used the Hollywood Hotel that Fox used for NASCAR, and I turned to my right and looked next to the host chair, and there was Chris Myers' Paul Mitchell hairspray bottle. So that's the way I ran into... That's the way I ran into Chris. You know, I didn't... (laughs) You know, that's the way I ran ran into Chris back in the day. that, that is so funny. Man, I, I love doing shows with him. He was so good. And he was he was a great reporter and would work the story. If you think about somebody like Chris, a terrific bureau reporter for so many years, right. uh, then crushed it on SportsCenter, Baseball Tonight, up close after Roy Firestone. That's right. And then, uh, then this career, you know, calling NFL games on Fox and hosting um, the, the NASCAR and doing a whole bunch of other stuff. He's like done everything in his career has been on network TV for you know over 30 years and has just been awesome at everything he does. What a, what a great guy. And what a, what a pleasure it was to work with uh, I kid because <laughs> I kid because I care. That's right. Uh, me here, you there, all that business. You're no oh, good. I remember all that. What a time. <laughs> you, you, you're no good. Got replaced with baseball. You, you're not safe. That's right. <laughs> I was tagged out. Man, I, I can think of like a hundred Chris Myers isms uh, doing shows with him, but Good days and fun times. And what I love, Rich, about that yep. is like, so many people from that era that we were all together are all still doing this 25 years later. Um, it's it's you know, fun every time you turn on TV and see somebody from that, that era, that family. So it's uh, Me too. good memories. And every once in a while, you just stumble into a conversation like this about those times. Me too. That's why I, I rarely bring that up when, uh, when I get to chat with you. Mike, thanks for the time. Drive safe wherever hey, you're guys. going. 